Hello dreamers and welcome to The Sleepy Scholar, the podcast that helps you learn in your dreams. I'm Debbie and tonight we will embark on a serene journey into the enchanting realms of Irish mythology. Before we begin, take a moment to settle in comfortably. Find your perfect spot, whether curled up in bed or snuggled on a cosy couch. And let yourself relax. Just a quick reminder to subscribe to The Sleepy Scholar if you haven't already. You can find me on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts and all your favourite platforms. We all know how difficult it can be to fall asleep when our minds are racing with thoughts from the day. That's why I created this podcast, to help us unwind, calm our minds and peacefully drift off into a deep sleep through the power of storytelling. Now. Close your eyes and take a long, deep breath through your nose, letting the cool air fill your lungs. Hold it for just a moment, then let it out slowly through your mouth, feeling the day's stress melt away with each breath. Do this a few more times. Breathe in calm. Breathe out any worries. Imagine yourself in the heart of ancient Ireland, standing on the shores of a mystical lake surrounded by rolling hills. The lake is a mirror, reflecting the twilight sky painted in shades of purple and pink. As you walk along the shore, feel the cool, smooth pebbles under your feet, and the gentle lapping of the water at your toes. You come across an ancient stone circle partially hidden by tall grasses and wildflowers that grow around it. The stones are moss-covered and weathered by time, standing tall and silent, as if they hold the secrets of countless generations. Find a place to sit within the circle feeling the ancient power of this sacred space. The air is filled with the sweet scent of blooming heather and the fresh aroma of the lake. In the distance, you hear the soft hum of bees and the occasional croak of a frog. A gentle breeze rustles the leaves of nearby willow trees, their branches trailing in the water like fingers dipping into a magical realm. As you sit in this tranquil spot, let your mind wander. Picture the stories of old carried on the breeze. Tales of love, bravery and magic that have woven themselves into the very fabric of this land. The water of the lake shimmers in the fading light, creating ripples that dance like whispers across the surface. Feel the connection to the earth beneath you 
grounding you in this timeless place. As you listen to the story of Jermyth and Grania, let the rhythm of the tale guide you deeper into relaxation. Imagine their love unfolding like the ripples on the lake, spreading out and touching everything in its path. Release any lingering thoughts or worries now and let the enchantment of the story carry you away like a leaf floating on the water. Relax, unwind and prepare for an enchanting journey. Sweet dreams, dear dreamers. Fado Fado in Ireland. The natural beauty of the land was a breathtaking sight. Rolling hills and thick forests dotted the landscape, their every sway hinting at long held mysteries. The landscape stretched out in an expanse of verdant greens and yellows. Dappled among the long grasses were bursts of vibrant flowers, their perfume exciting the air. As the sun descended, cooling the earth below, its fading light touched the serene lakes, imbuing the scene with a timeless, almost magical quality. Amidst this enchanting land lived Dermot Orunya, a warrior of the Fianna, renowned not only for his extraordinary beauty and courage, but also for his deep sense of loyalty and honour. Dermot's dark hair framed a face that was both handsome and fierce, his eyes reflecting a mixture of wisdom and a touch of sadness. Squarely centred on Jermid's forehead was a distinctive mark, a love spot. This wasn't your average birthmark. It was a mystical mark that had been gifted to him by a fairy woman the love spot wielded an irresistible allure that left women utterly spellbound. Yet, despite the constant female adoration, Jermud never took advantage of his charm for selfish reasons. He remained steadfast and reliable, always defending his friends and fulfilling his responsibilities without fail. From a young age, Jermud had proven himself in battle, his agility and strength unmatched among his peers. His loyalty to Fionn Makul and the Fianna was unwavering, and his bravery in combat had earned him respect and admiration. However, beneath this warrior exterior, Jermyth longed for a love that would transcend the battlefield, a love that he found in Grania. Enter Grania, the daughter of Cormac Mockarth, the High King of Ireland. She was said to be the most beautiful woman in all of Ireland her long, dark hair cascading down her back like a dark river flowing over ancient, moonlit stones. Her piercing blue eyes seem to hold secrets and mysteries beyond anyone's understanding. Though she was a princess, Gronya had a fiery spirit 
and a sense of adventure that couldn't be contained within the boundaries of royal life. Gronia's life had taken a dramatic turn when her father arranged for her to marry Fionn Makul, the famed leader of the Fianna. Fionn, a man renowned for his wisdom and prowess in battle, was much older than Gronia. Though respected and powerful, he did not stir her heart. The rich aroma of roasted meat and spiced ale filled the air as Gronia sat at the head of the lavish banquet, dressed in a heavy silk gown and adorned with jewels. But despite the grandeur around her, she couldn't shake off the overwhelming sense of dread and unease that came with an arranged marriage to a man she didn't even love. As she forced a smile and listened to her intended family make toasts and speak of a prosperous future, her heart felt heavy with the weight of her impending marriage. It was during this feast that Gronia's gaze landed on a young warrior. His hair was as black as midnight, tumbling around his face, sturdy and finely carved like an ancient statue. Yet it was the enigma of his gaze that captivated her. Unfathomable depths steeped in wisdom and melancholy. She couldn't look away, drawn to him like a moth to a flame. She had heard tales of his bravery, and the magical love spot on his forehead said to make him utterly irresistible to any woman who gazed upon it. Yet it was his noble and pure heart that truly captured her attention. With her heart racing, Gronia stepped forward and looked deeply into Jermid's eyes. Her hands shook as she spoke, casting a gaze upon him with each carefully chosen word. She could feel the power of the spell taking hold, binding their fates together. Jermud felt an overwhelming pull in his heart, an inexplicable urge to protect and aid Gronya in her desperate bid for freedom. The Grand Hall, once filled with joy and celebration, now seemed suffocating. Jermid's duty to the Fianna battled with an unyielding magical compulsion to help Gronya, leaving him torn and uncertain. But when she made her desperate bid for freedom, he knew he had no choice but to follow her no matter what dangers may lie ahead. Under the cover of darkness, Dermot and Gronia slipped away from Tara, embarking on a perilous journey through the dense forests and rugged mountains of Ireland. Each step was fraught with danger and uncertainty as Fionn and his warriors were never far behind. The lush green forests, with their towering trees and dense undergrowth, became both sanctuary and obstacle. They found refuge in hidden glens and ancient caves, each place imbued with the magic of the old world. One such refuge was the forest of Dovros, where the trees whispered ancient secrets and the air was thick with enchantment. The forest floor was carpeted with soft moss and shafts of sunlight pierced through the canopy, 
creating dappled patterns of light and shadow. The sun began to set over the rolling hills, casting a warm glow on Jermyth and Gronya as they sat together on a soft patch of grass. As they shared their stories of their past and their dreams for the future, their bond deepened even further in this enchanting place. Their journey was filled with moments of pure wonder. They ventured across sprawling terrains, meeting friendly druids along the way. These druids were kind and welcoming, providing them with a safe place to rest from the unpredictable wilds. Among these druids was Kava, an elder known for his deep wisdom. His long white beard flowed down like a river and his eyes sparkled with the knowledge he had gathered over centuries, making him an impressive figure to look at. Kafa gifted them powerful talismans, each carefully made from uncommon stones and filled with protective spells. He also shared his deep understanding of the land's hidden aspects, showing them secret paths that only those who knew their sacred secrets could see. Along their journey they also came across enchanted animals, sent by the spirits overseeing the land. Ancient protectors whose spiritual essence touched every rock, tree and stream. These animals helped guide them through dangerous landscapes. Deer guided them through thick forests where shadows seemed to move eerily between the trees. Brightly coloured birds flew ahead of them. Their eyes glowed like stars in the night or early morning fog, a clear sign of their magical beginnings. Under twinkling stars, Diarmuid and Gráinne made their way to the secret cave of the lovers, a hidden sanctuary covered in ancient carvings that told stories of love and heroism. The air inside the cave was cool and damp. The sound of dripping water created a soothing rhythm. As they sat by the fire, Jermyth and Gráinne shared their hopes and fears, their voices echoing softly in the cavern. The flickering flames cast a warm glow on their faces, illuminating the depth of their emotions. Jermyth, ever the protector, promised Gráinne that he would keep her safe no matter the cost. Gronya, in turn, vowed to stay by his side, her love for him growing with each passing day. Their journey was also fraught with challenges. They encountered treacherous landscapes from rocky cliffs to dark forests. At one point they were cornered by Fionn's men near a roaring waterfall. The deafening rush of water made it difficult to think, but Diarmid's keen eyes spotted a narrow path behind the falling sheets of water, and he gestured for Gronya to follow him. With quick movements and agile leaps, they made their way to safety, leaving their enemies behind in the mist and noise. During another chapter of their adventure, they sought shelter within a stone circle as a wild storm raged around them. These rocks, weathered by endless cycles of sun and rain, hummed with a deep-rooted energy that seemed almost alive. 
Grania, in tune with the mystical forces swirling about them, felt the stones cast a protective shield around them. They huddled together at the centre of this ancient site. The storm's fury unrelenting. Spidery forks of lightning lit up the sky, while thunder pounded out a steady beat against the ground. But inside their rocky haven, they felt a peaceful defiance against the storm's anger. They let the storm's chaos play out around them, each crash and flash strengthening their bond with each other and with the land that held them safe. At the climax of their unending escape, Dermoth and Gronia found themselves irresistibly drawn to the wild enchantment of Ben Bulban. This was a place where nature's raw beauty merged with the echoes of ancient magic. The towering cliffs stood as watchful guards, their silhouettes stretching over valleys that plunged deep into Earth's crust creating a fortress shaped by none other than Mother Nature herself. But Ben Bulban was more than just a natural shelter. It drew together the concrete world of mankind with the ephemeral and elusive Otherworld. The sun beat down on the lush green hillside as Dirmuth and Gronia languished by a lively stream. Suddenly, the distant sound of hunting horns shattered the peaceful atmosphere. Gronia's heart raced with fear as she realised that Fionn and his warriors had finally found them. Jermoth wasted no time in preparing for battle. He reached for his red spear that could pierce any armour, the Guy Jarek, and braced himself for the coming confrontation. The sun dipped lower, casting long shadows over the mountain of Ben Bulban. The golden light flickered through the trees, creating a dreamlike atmosphere. The stream beside which Jermud and Gráinne had rested now seemed to glisten with an eerie, foreboding light. As Jermud readied himself, he turned to Gráinne, his eyes filled with a mix of love and determination. He gently brushed a strand of her ebony hair behind her ear, his touch lingering on her cheek. Stay here, my love, he whispered. I must face this alone. Gronya's eyes welled with tears, but she nodded, knowing that this was a battle Jermuth had to fight. Her heart pounded as she watched him stride towards the approaching danger, his silhouette strong and unwavering against the fading light. It wasn't a man who emerged from the shadows, but a boar, its presence otherworldly and menacing. Its fur bristled with dark energy and its eyes glowed with a malevolent light. Dermot's grip on his spear tightened as he confronted the beast. The air crackled with tension, and for a moment, time seemed to stand still. Dermot moved with the grace and speed of a true warrior, every muscle taut and ready. He circled the boar, looking for an opening, his senses heightened. The boar, a monstrous beast of ancient lore, lunged forward in a ferocious charge. Its eyes blazed with an unholy light, the embodiment of its dark magic. 
Dermot stood his ground fearlessly against the oncoming onslaught. His spear was held steady in his firm grasp, its sharp tip gleaming ominously under the weak sunlight. With a warrior's precision born from countless battles, he thrust his weapon forward as the boar came near. The spear found its mark, piercing through the thick hide of the beast. Yet, even as victory seemed within his grasp, the creature's dark sorcery proved to be an overpowering force. In one final act of defiance and raw power, it retaliated with a devastating blow. The collision was both brutal and instantaneous. Jermud, locked in an inevitable dance with destiny, met his end not at the hands of a man, but a wild boar. The beast's tusk found its mark, dealing him a mortal wound that sent him crashing to the earth. His body collided with the ground, sending a resonating thud through the eerily quiet battlefield. This was no ordinary duel. It was the fulfilment of an age-old prophecy that had always loomed over him. That he would meet his demise by the tusk of a boar. And so, as his life force ebbed away on this chilling stage of battle, fate had claimed its due. The world around Gronia seemed to collapse into a single appalling image. Dermid, the man she loved more than life itself, crumpling to the ground. His spear fell from his grasp, clattering onto the earth next to him, like an ominous death knell. Her breath caught painfully in her throat as she watched the scene play out her vision blurring everything else into insignificance. As Jermid lay dying on the cold ground, Fionn watched on, stunned. He had been born with a gift of healing with water that could restore even those at death's door. Yet there was a hesitation in Fionn's eyes a lingering resentment for Jermid who had stolen away his betrothed Gronje. His hands remained still while precious seconds slipped away. It was Oshin, Fionn's son, who pleaded fervently with his father to put aside old grievances and save Jermid before it was too late. But by then, Time had already run its course, cruelly. Fionn relented, compelled more by guilt than goodwill. But it was too late. The healing water trickled uselessly onto the ground as Jermid succumbed to his injuries under Gronje's horrified gaze. Gronje rushed to Jermid's side her heart breaking with each step. She cradled his head in her lap, her tears falling onto his face like rain. The forest around them faded away, leaving only the two of them in a moment of profound sorrow and love. German, Mohro, she whispered, her voice choking with grief. Please don't leave me. At that moment, the last light left his eyes and Gronia felt a piece of her own soul being torn away. She held him close, rocking gently as the first stars appeared in the night sky. The world seemed to mourn with her, 
the wind whispering through the trees like a lament for the fallen hero. After laying Diarmuid to rest in the sacred ground of Benbulban, Gronya returned to Tara. Although her heart was burdened with grief, her spirit remained unbroken. She carried the memory of their love like a beacon, lighting her way through the darkest times. Gronya's resilience inspired those around her. She showed that even in the face of overwhelming sorrow, love could endure and even thrive. Her story became a cherished part of Irish folklore, a testament to the power of love and the courage it takes to defy fate. Gronya's strength and Diarmid's bravery were celebrated in story and song, their legacy living on as a beacon of hope and inspiration. Their tale was a reminder that true love endures beyond the boundaries of life and death, and that the courage to follow one's heart can change the course of destiny. As you drift off to sleep now, let the echoes of Jermyth and Gronya's journey guide your dreams, reminding you of the power of love and the strength it takes to face our destinies. Ihawai Agus Kola Sov.